The old booster cryostan moved with added version 3 clamps at Massey's. Ship quick disconnect arm has main cryo pipes installed at Sanchez. Gigabase Steel has officially started construction at the build site. And we have a super heavy Starship Flight 11 recap for you from the launch site. These are just some of the many changes to Starbase Texas, so settle in for episode 102 of Starbase Flyover Update from your favorite camera in the sky, RGV Aerial Photography. This flight was conducted on October the 12th at 6,000 feet with perfect weather for the newest set of high quality images to keep us up to date. I'm BJ and I'll be guiding you around today, so kick back and enjoy. We'll start this week with a quick Flight 11 recap. During the week, SpaceX released images of both Super Heavy Booster 15-2 and Starship 38 rolling to the launch pad. There was quite a lot of interest in this set of vehicles as they were the very last of the version 2 airframes to fly and would also be the last vehicles launched from the now obsolete Launch Pad 1. Then on October 13, 2025, SpaceX launched its 11th Starship test flight from Starbase, Texas, which was a step toward full reusability featuring the second reflight of a super heavy booster and the first of its kind entry maneuver. At 6.36 p.m. Central Daylight Time, the Starship stack composed of Booster 15 and Ship 38 lifted off from Pad 1 with all 33 engines igniting. The stack had a perfect ascent with most engines cut off, or MECO, and hot staging going as intended. Booster 15 then started its boost back burn with 12 of the 13 engines lit. It then guided itself to its intended position for the landing burn where it ignited 13 engines for the first phase, then dropped down to five and finally three where it came to a hover above the water. It then shut down the final three and collided with the ocean and had a rapid scheduled disassembly. Starship then powered its way to Seco where it successfully cut off all of its engines at around the six minute mark into the flight. It then had a brief coast phase until around T plus 17 minutes when the payload deploy demonstration began. This lasted until around T plus 25 minutes and all eight Starlink simulators were deployed successfully and significantly smoother than the previous test. It then had another brief coast until T plus 37 minutes and 51 seconds where it conducted a single engine burn. The ship then reoriented itself for re-entry where there were no visible burn through areas spotted during the way down. Before landing, Starship conducted a new maneuver known as a dynamic bank. This turn was to simulate the flight path for when a Starship is coming in for a landing at the tower, allowing it to avoid major population centers. This launch repeated many things required to make Starship operational and a new maneuver required to conduct ship catch in the future. We thank SpaceX for the incredible views and a great show. And with that, on to Massey's. Before we begin, here is a labeled map from Procky to help you navigate the site. Starting at the fluids bunker, piping and commodities have been extended to near the flame trench gantry. Some piping and gas lines are positioned on the second level of the structure. At the methane tank farm, a large cryogenic line has been staged for installation on the pipe rack, likely serving as either the methane supply or return. Adjacent to the large methane tank, two methane offload points have been installed for deliveries. Moving to the subcoolers, they have been plumbed into the main methane delivery line from the pumps. The output line is also visible. The storage tanks have been connected to the main supply line to the pumps. Nearby, the methane recovery area has had most of its plumbing installed also. We can see here where the main methane return line from the static fire stand will be connected. Shifting focus to the lock side of the tank farm, the cryogenic locks pipes have been connected to the input and output sides of the pumps. These pumps have yet to make an appearance. Further over, the pipe from the heat exchangers to the static fire stand has been installed, though yet to be connected. The chill down line and subcooler exhaust have been routed to the box fan which disperses liquid nitrogen vapor to prevent it from lingering on the ground. Next, at the cryo stand, relocated from Sanchez, it appears to be receiving modifications for version 3. Turning to the old can crusher, large vertical structures have been added to the previously installed pieces, speculated to be hardware for testing grid fin sockets. 
Nearby, the old booster cryo stand, now relocated to the site, has been equipped with new clamps designed to interface with version 3 boosters. This is an interesting development because without major modifications, a booster with engines installed would not be able to fit on this stand without damaging the outer 20 engine bells. Finally, at the new electrical building, the structure has been fully poured and electrical conduit has been installed on the left side. This is possibly a new location for the main transformers for the entire site. That's all from Massey's, so we'll move over to Sanchez now. Here's a labeled map to find your way around the site. Beginning at the front of the site, we can see many of the new Tesla Cybertrucks that SpaceX recently took delivery of. Keep your eye out throughout this episode for more of them peppered around Starbase. Charging stations can be seen along the entire front wall. The new version 3 booster stand has received its alignment balls and appear to now be complete and ready for a booster whenever it is ready. Moving along the wall, a new stand has been built. It is unclear what the purpose of this stand is, but we'll be sure to update in a future episode if we find out. Across from the stand assembly area, another large frame is taking shape. Featuring four trapezoidal spokes around a central column, this one has us stumped. Let us know what you think it might be in the comments. Hidden in the inventory area, a few more booster arm protection doors have been delivered. Taking a look at the ship quick disconnect arm, we can see that cryo lines have been installed. In the scrap yard, we can see that the ship 26 nose cone has been scrapped. The version three ship aft pathfinder has been scrapped as well. Finally, a large area has been cleared to give room to construct work platforms for the bays. Just before moving to the build site, we would like to thank all of our YouTube and Patreon members. Remember, all the patrons get to participate in our show and tell sessions on the same day of each flight. Here you can join in the discussions and ask your own questions. YouTube members also get to watch and listen in with a live chat function. Starting off at the Gigabay, we can see all the pile cap concrete has been poured. The final layer of concrete for the right side aisle is also complete. Looking along the factory side workstations, the top layer around them is also complete with four of the six actual workstations poured with the remaining two poured on the 13th. The left side aisle has half its concrete laid with plenty of work on the remaining areas progressing rapidly with half the center poured on the 14th and the remaining half of the aisle poured on the 15th. This week sees the construction of two of the tower cranes. There are two more to be constructed to mirror these over on the left side. We can officially say that construction of the Gigabay itself is underway with the very first column placed in the right rear corner. Gigabay Steel is quickly being staged at nearby lots. First here at the lot closer to Starbase, the bundles of rebar have been replaced with dozens of steel columns. An additional lot on the edge of Brownsville is also being used to stage steel for the bay. This lot also has the crane previously used to construct the mega bunker at the launch site. This crane was moved to the build site and assembled on the 14th of October. It was then immediately put to work continuing the construction of the tower cranes. More tower crane parts are staged here as well. A couple of small concrete pours around the perimeter of this site wraps up this week's update here. Booster 18 construction has resumed with the forward dome and the F2 barrel sections moved into Mega Bay 1. This footage is from Lab Padre's Rover 1 cam with a big shout out to Vix for posting it on X. The forward is also spotted in the Flight 11 broadcast by SpaceX. Moving over to Mega Bay 2, we finally got to see the Ship 39 nose cone and payload base section roll from the factory on the 13th of October. This ship has the added hardware for the docking and refueling missions that are planned in the near future. Once again, a big thanks to Lab Padre for this footage. Inside the bay, the Pez dispenser sleeving stand is staged ready to start the initial construction step of having it placed inside Shift 39. 
The dispenser can be seen in the doorway of the factory during our flyover and was rolled out just before the nose cone. Around the back of the factory, the temporary fuel tank for the bakery has been removed, leaving the new permanent tank to supply fuel. The apartment complex on Meme Street is moving ahead rapidly with the majority of its accommodation area's prefab sections placed. Roughly a quarter of the parking garage is also constructed now. The ramps for the floors can be seen in this image also. A parapet wall is being constructed on the north side roof and continuing along the east. Finishing at the village, LBJ Boulevard now has lines marking the pedestrian crossings and parking bays. Over at the rec center, the new play area now has a beach volleyball court. That's it for the build site. Let's head on over to the launch site now. Here's this week's labeled map. Take a moment to pause the video if you need extra time looking it over. With the success of Flight 11, let's begin this week at Pad 1, where the full stack of Booster 15-2 and Ship 38 stand ready for flight. Next to the launch mount, the ship transport stand is awaiting its move to storage. A great sense of scale here is a person walking beside it. The rest of the pad has been cleared with only a few vehicles parked near the deluge farm. Along the tank farm blast wall, the booster transport stand is also staged to be removed from the pad. At the offload area, two trucks can be seen unloading into the tank farm. The high pressure helium trailers are not in their typical location. Further down the tank farm, these trailers are parked but seem to be staged only as backup as the new Pad 2 tanks under the liquid nitrogen tanks may be online for this launch. Continuing along the highway, the north side of the mega bunker is complete. Window installation has begun with these two on the right side still covered in protective film. At the Pad 2 deluge tank farm, the final manifold has been reinstalled on top of the tank. Just below, the rest of the pipework is visible that is used for pressurizing and depressurizing the tanks for the top deck of the OLM. Between the two banks of water tanks, the main supply pipe for that system is also seen progress. An expansion coupler has been added between the two flanges closer to the blast wall. To accomplish this, the pipe has been cut near the elbow. The gap here suggests a valve may still be installed to block the flow of water to the launch mount. Before moving to the pad 2 flame trench and launch mount, to the side of the staging pad, rebar is being prepared to pour this concrete slab. New conduit runs, and at least two gas commodity pipes are running in the direction of this vault with four hatches. This may be to allow for pressurization of vehicles while parked on the staging pad. With the scaffolding removed from around the water pipes, the path of these pipes is a bit clearer. The purpose of the two disconnected pipes is still unknown. To the left, the three-sided embed observed last flyover in Sanchez is staged. It appears to be for installing cladding around the water pipes. The SpaceX LR11000 is staged here as well, protected from the launch with a cover over its cab. Many of the counterweights were taken back to Sanchez for some reason. They returned to the launch site on October 15th, suggesting reassembly will happen soon. Looking quickly at the Highway 4 storage lot, the pendants for the SpaceX-owned boom sections have been transported from Sanchez to be placed in the transport cradles of each section. With launch complete, we should see these headed back to the launch site soon. Moving to Pad 2, the GSC bunker cladding is very close to completion. Only these two panels on the wings remain, as well as the top ridge over the deluge manifold. Below, these two openings are expected to be filled with vertical panels that don't follow the sloped surface. At the edge of the retention pond, narrow panels are staged and will bridge the gap between the bunker and the flame trench walls. A new vent can be seen on the east slope of the bunker. The pipe behind here disappears behind the methane valve sled, making it difficult to know what it will indicate in the new feeling process. Moving to the top of the launch mount, the long-awaited main propellant flex lines have been installed. The LOX hose is seen in this image, 
and the methane hose was installed later in the day. In this low angle view, both booster quick disconnects are extended for the hose installation with the doors likely open with the final linkages. Looking at the clamp arms, they have all been retracted into the mount. Each arm has a pair of tabs that limit how far they can retract. Finally, a weekly glance at the ASU site shows continued concrete perimeter work is close to completion with only the entrance area to be finished. Several precast concrete vaults are staged for installation. Within the double walled area, conduits are now being installed. And that's it for episode 102, Starbase Flyover Update. Thank you for choosing to fly with RGV Aerial Photography, and I hope you all enjoyed the flight. If you like what you saw today, please subscribe for more episodes and content so you don't miss out on all the new videos each week. I'm BJ, and we hope to see you again from 6,000 feet.